What up guys, this is Stefan from App Stuff. In this video, we're gonna be going over the binary search algorithm. I'm gonna show you two different ways of how to do it. And then at the end of the video, you're gonna go over some advantages. And this is actually a pretty common question you're gonna see in interviews, not only how to perform a binary search algorithm, but what some of the advantages are to other search methods. So let's go ahead and get started with a new playground. Select blank, hit next. I'm gonna call this binary search. Okay, make this a little bigger. Okay guys, so we can go ahead and delete this code. We do need to create an array of numbers or integers that we're gonna be searching through. Just make it a bunch of random numbers. Okay, so that's gonna be my array. Now we're gonna create our function. So say func binary search. And we're gonna pass in two values, a search value which is gonna be an integer, and then the array of numbers that we're gonna sort through, which is gonna be an array of integers, pretty self-explanatory. We're gonna return a Boolean variable to tell us whether or not our search is successful, and then say return false so Xcode doesn't yell at us. Okay, so we need to get into a little bit of theory on how binary search works before we start coding so we understand what we're doing. So I'm gonna open up this page here, and let's see what it says. Binary search algorithm, algorithm finds an item in a sorted array. So that's the trickery. We have to sort this array. And that's because we're going to start with the middle number and ask if it's bigger or smaller than our target number. Since this array is sorted, this tells us if the target would be in the left half or the right half of our array, which effectively divides our problem in half, as opposed to a linear search, which would just go through L index by index until it finishes throughout the array, um, or not finishes until it finds that value which is gonna take a lot of time if we have like a really large data set. So binary search has a lot of advantages in terms of the computing power that it takes. So let's go ahead and get started by sorting our array. And it's pretty really simple to do. We're gonna say let array equal array dot sorted by, select that option there. And we can just type this less than sign, which is super convenient. And that's gonna sort our array from smallest value to largest value. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and call this function so we can see what that looks like. Pass in our number array, hit play. And as we can see, our array is now sorted. Okay, so now this is what we're gonna do. Um, I'm gonna uh, create some variables for our left index and our right index, and we're gonna see why in just a second. So we're gonna say var left index equals zero, var right index equals array dot count minus one. Okay, so um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to use a while loop to do this. So we're going to say while left index is less than or equal to right index. Um, and this is where we're going to perform our searching, essentially. So what we need now is our middle index and our middle value. And I'm going to explain, explain what's going on here in a second, guys. So we're going to say let middle index equal parenthesis left index plus right index divided by 2. And our middle value is gonna equal our uh, array bracket middle index. Okay, so now we have our middle index and our middle value, okay? So let's go ahead and just say, um, I, I'm not gonna print that out. Uh, we can just kind of eyeball it here. So um, we're gonna ask our algorithm to tell us whether or not our search value is less than or greater than this middle value we just created here. So say we were searching for two, it's gonna ask if two is less than the middle value, which is gonna be either, either 14 or 16, I'm not sure. And then um, we're essentially gonna change the right or left index in accordance to that. So in this case, if it was two, we're gonna change the right index to be 14, I think it's gonna be, and then we're only gonna perform that search on that set of numbers. And we're gonna keep going until we find or don't find our search value. So that's what this is gonna look like. First, we wanna create the case for if our search value is equal to our middle middle value make sure you do middle value not index and we're going to return true okay then we have two more cases to handle if search value is less than middle value and if search value is greater than middle value right so um if the search value is less than the middle value then we want to shift our right index right so when we start out, it's 99. If it's less than our, or if our search value is less than our middle value, we want to shift that right index to be our uh, middle index. 
So that's going to look like this. We're going to say right index equals middle index minus one. And then vice versa. If the search value is greater than our middle value, we're going to say left index equals middle index plus one. Right, so um, in this case, I think our middle index or value will be 14. On the next iteration of the loop, it's going to only look through it's going to look through the middle value or middle index minus one. So it's going to look through two, four, and 10, which is uh, super convenient. So now let's go ahead and run this again and see if it works. And we notice um, this function ran three times and it gives us back a value of true. So that's the first way we're going to be doing our binary search guys. Um, and like I said, we do that by creating a while loop and shifting around our left and right indices. Okay. Um, now I'm going to show you guys another way to perform this binary search and it's going to look something like this. So say func alternate binary search and it's going to pass in these same uh, values here or parameters. Um, yep. And then just do the same thing. Say return false down at the bottom. And essentially, instead of uh, changing our right or left indices, we can essentially just create um, a new array for our algorithm to search through and use recursion instead of using a while loop. Okay, so um, let me just make some comments here. Uses while loop. And this one uses recursion. And we're gonna see how this works in just a second. So um, I'm showing you guys two ways just so you can get an idea of how this stuff works on a deeper level. And depending on your programming style, you can kind of pick which one you want. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this done. So we're gonna say var array because we're gonna be mutating this array instead of uh, the indices here. And we, we do need to sort it again. So we're gonna say array.sorted by that guy. Okay, and uh, let's just call this sorted array to make it more clear. You don't have to, but okay. So we do need that left index and right index up again. So we're gonna say let left index equal zero, let right index equal, um, let me see, uh, array.count minus one. And uh, let's keep going and we can just go ahead copy these values as well. Okay, so now that we have all our values, we actually don't need to use a loop here because we're gonna use recursion. So we're gonna say if search value equals uh, middle value, oops, we are just gonna return true. And then we just, we go through our same cases guys. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste these guys. It's very similar, just uses a different method of finding our value. So go ahead and delete these two lines of code. And quick error I caught before we move forward is that we need to make sure we're using this sorted array here instead of the array that we are passing in as a parameter. Okay, so let me go ahead and call this function so we can see what our sorted array looks like. Hit play. Okay guys, so this is our sorted array. Now let's uh, see what's going on for this case down here. So if our search value is less than our middle value, so say we're searching for two, our middle value is 14, then we wanna create a new array um, starting at two and ending at that middle value minus one, pass that new array back into our function or take that new array and pass it back into our function which we're gonna call recursively in this block of code here. So let's create the new array right now. We're going to say sorted array equals array. And it's going to be our sorted array from our left index all the way up to our middle index minus one, right? So it's going to be starting here and going up to 10 because we don't need that 14 anymore because our search value is not equal to our middle value. So we can just go ahead and remove it from that array, okay? And let's go ahead and print out our sorted array so we can see what that looks like. Go ahead and copy and paste that for our greater than case. And we're just gonna change these values to middle index plus one all the way up to our right index. 
for our greater than case. So it's pretty self-explanatory with what's going on there. So let's go ahead and run this function again and see what we get. Okay, so it gives us 2, 4, and 10 on our second uh, iteration here when we print that guy out, right? That, and just like we uh, thought it or expected it to, now what we need to do is uh, call our function recursively so that it can continue uh, sp uh, sp like splicing this array until it finds that value for us. So we're going to say return alternate binary search because remember, we need to return a Boolean variable and this function returns a Boolean variable so we can say return and then the function name and it'll take care of that for us. Pass in our search value and this new sorted array that we have. And do the same thing down here. Hit play. Okay, you notice we get two and you notice it got spliced another time. It went from two, four, and 10 all the way down to two and then it hit this line of code and said, okay, we found our value, we're returning true. So that's looking really good there, guys. I hope you get an understanding of what's going on. Now we need to implement some error handling um, for when that search value is not contained within our array. So we need to say, if search value is less than sorted array left index, or search value is greater than sorted array right index, we're gonna return false, okay? So essentially what this is saying is that this is the minimum value in our array and this is the maximum value in our array. So if the search value is greater than that maximum value, it's not gonna be in our array because of the fact that it's sorted, uh, vice versa with our left index value of that sorted array. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if this works. We're gonna go down here, just pass in any value that's not in the array, hit run. We're gonna get false, so that's looking good. And uh, for our final uh, means of error handling, we wanna make sure that someone, if someone passes in an empty array, that we handle the case for that as well. So we need to do that up here and say if array.count equals zero, we're gonna return false, okay? And that can't be the sorted array because if they pass in an empty array and we try to sort it like this, we're gonna get an error. So, um, do that with the array that we're passing in. And let's go ahead up and go up here and check and see if this works. So go ahead and delete all these values. Say it's an empty integer array. And then uh, let's go ahead and hit run here. And we'll notice that we get false, which is looking really good, guys. So that's uh, going to wrap up this video for binary searching. Um, I hope you guys learned a lot. Uh, remember the advantages of binary search over uh, linear searching in the fact that it gets the processing time is O to the log N as opposed to O to the N for linear searching. Um, and uh, we did two methods, which was uh, using a while loop and then we did some recursion as well. Hope you guys liked the video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. I'll also keep the, uh, the source code uh, in the description of the project. Um, hope you guys liked it. Thanks for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Peace out.